I'm Jeremy Taylor and my book Not a Chimp is about one of the most audacious scientific endeavours in the history of evolutionary biology. It's the attempt to find the genetic changes that allowed us, Homo sapiens, to evolve from the common ancestor of us and the chimpanzee some six million years ago. We've chosen the chimp for comparison because it's our nearest relative in terms of living DNA, cognition and behaviour, the very things that are either so difficult or impossible to extract or deduce from fossils. In the four years since scientists unravelled the chimpanzee's DNA book of life, we've discovered a veritable Aladdin's cave of new genetic mechanisms that have widened the gulf between us and chimpanzees, and rather eclipsed the more old-fashioned notion that chimp-human differences are down to a mere handful of simple mutations in the genetic code. This is what I call the 1.6% mantra, the idea that chimpanzees uh, and the chimpanzee genome is more than 98.4% similar to our own, and that we should therefore be seen simply as remodeled apes, or chimps with a tweak. These genetic differences have been bolstered recently by the discovery of a number of subtle differences in the structure and function between chimpanzee and human brains. While scientists comparing the way that chimpanzees and other animals think have discovered that in a number of areas of social co cognition and in the manufacture and use of tools, dogs and members of the crow family of birds, respectively, are more than a match for chimps. All this appears lost, however, to a number of scientists and philosophers who seem hell-bent on exaggerating the similarities while ignoring or trivialising these very important differences between chimpanzees and humans. They're locked in the past and they use this rather outmoded account of genetics, this 1.6% mantra, to try and persuade us that humans and chimpanzees are so similar that chimpanzees should share the same genus Homo as humans, and that they should be granted human rights as the best way of saving them from extinction. They exploit our very strong sense of empathy with other animal species. For instance, in the US alone, over 200 chimpanzees are kept in homes as pets, even though, occasionally and tragically, they cause enormous mayhem and injury when their true identity as wild animals reasserts itself and nature bites back. I argue that while chimpanzees are proving absolutely invaluable to our quest to understand what it was that made us human, and when, we should learn to keep them more at arm's length, scientifically and emotionally. Too much has been made, in my opinion, of the apparent genetic proximity and the apparent behavioural similarity between us and chimpanzees. We humans may be cognitively unique in the animal kingdom after all, and the challenge is to explain how that uniqueness came about through properly understood Darwinian mechanisms. Whatever it was that made us human, chimps are not the nearly men some of us would like to pretend they are, and we humans are certainly not a chimp.